Okay, and uh, one last thing. Uh, one last thing I want to just uh, tell you in two dimension is how do we integrate arbitrary functions? So how do we evaluate the integral of v and f for a known but arbitrary function f on the right hand side? In one dimension, what did we? How, how did we do that? We had Gauss quadrature, right? So we represented this. Uh, we represented this as approximate this as a summation of uh, w i times v x i and f x i, right? In two dimensions, we can do exactly the same thing, but the Gauss quadrature points and weights are going to be adapted to the two dimensional form. So, so uh, in a triangle, there are very good, very nice Gauss quadrature points. So, so in a triangle, there are points that are going to give you very accurate quadrature uh, for for like for triangular elements, and uh, uh, for for other elements, you can also get it. And one of the actually very active and still very difficult uh, points in in for further research is how do you come up with good quadrature points for arbitrary elements? And for example, people are starting to think about how do I, how, how do I apply finite element to, to the kind of mesh we dealt with in finite volume, right? Remember in finite volume, uh, we can use really arbitrary types of mesh. Like we looked at triangular mesh, we also looked at this kind of uh, uh, adaptive mesh refinement where one element can interface with many different um, many different other neighboring elements. But deriving a quadrature scheme for this kind of arbitrary elements, which may shape like that, right, can be pretty difficult. And how to do this is still quite an open question. So that uh, completes our finite element discussion. And uh, uh, there is going to be another project out today. So, so there is also no lecture on Wednesday. So I'll see you soon. The next lecture is going to be next Monday. All right. Any questions? What did uh, F have a divergence from the elements? How do you integrate that? What if F has a what? A uh, divergence, like an infinity, like a delta function. How do you integrate the F? If f has a delta function, then the integration of a delta function with v is going to be just the value of v at that point. And because v is a piecewise linear function, that's actually easy to do, yeah, right? When you do the quadrature, you kind of you don't know that it Exactly. If you quadrature only works for smooth, at least continuous f's. If you don't have a continuous f, then you split it into continuous pieces. If you have delta functions, pull the delta function part out of the f and then use quadrature on the continuous smooth portion of f. On the non-smooth portion of f, you do something else. Quadrature, don't, don't use quadrature on delta functions or non-continuous functions. Okay, all right. Professor, yes. I found out the other day that my friend actually works for Professor Lacarino. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Carino? Yeah. Okay. Wasn't he your advisor? Yeah, he was my uh, co-advisor at Stanford. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, he. I think you gave a talk. <laughs>